Upon arriving home, JK immediately took a shower and changed his clothes. It was already 10 in the morning, but he decided to go to the office. There was a lot of work to be done. JK left Yin in the care of his mother. Mom, she's still very weak. Please make sure she has lunch and dinner, and don't let her skip meals. Don't worry dear, I'll keep an eye on her at home. JK was sitting in his office, going through his phone's photo gallery. There were several pictures of him and Yin from their wedding reception. A faint smile crept onto JK's face as he looked at these photos. Suddenly, he remembered something his father used to say when he was alive. If it weren't for continuing the family business, I'd prefer to live alone without women. Marriage is just a way to tie yourself down. Women's behavior is always perplexing. JK recalled that statement which he had heard from his father when he was just five years old. Even at that young age, he had looked up to his father immensely, believing that everything his father said was unquestionably true. However, this time, was what his father said true? Was life better without women? Up until now, JK had found his life enjoyable, free from the complications of love. He had even managed to suppress his feelings for his first love, Irene. But now, his life was different. JK was currently in a contractual marriage with Yin, and that contract was soon coming to an end. During their marriage, Yin had been a part of JK's daily life. Every night, they spent time together. To his surprise, the time he spent with Yin was not something he considered bad. JK thought to himself, Father, it seems that what you said about women may not always be true. This time, I disagree with you. With a smile on his face, JK continued with his work. As JK loosened his tie and unbuttoned his shirt, he noticed Yin lying on the bed, engrossed in her phone. She was trying to avoid him, but for now, JK chose to ignore her as he wanted to freshen up and relax. On the other side, Yin was trying to distance herself emotionally. She was building her emotional strength for the inevitable separation, hoping that it would make her stronger when the time came. After a while, JK emerged from the bathroom, looking refreshed. Yin had anticipated their usual interactions, but was surprised when JK seemed distant. He didn't ask his usual caring questions. It was as if he was indifferent. Yin thought to herself, maybe it's better this way. She lay with her back to him, expecting a peaceful night without any sweet gestures. The bed beside her creaked as JK got on it. But then, something unexpected happened. Slowly, JK's strong hand began to caress her belly from behind. Even now, JK was gently stroking Yin's still flat belly. I heard from my mother. Earlier, you didn't eat much. He's starting again. Is your stomach still feeling uncomfortable? JK, didn't I ask you not to do this anymore? Not do what? Not approach you? Not care? Not give you attention? Is that what you mean? JK asked while giving Yin light kisses on her cheek from behind, his hands still gently caressing her belly. If you really want to do that, do it with someone else. My task is just to get pregnant. And now I'm pregnant. Right now, I don't want to do it because you've just recovered. And even if I want to do it later, I will do it with you, not with any other woman. You don't need to be hypocritical. You've probably done it with other women before. JK stopped his actions and chuckled slightly at Yin's accusation. Do you think I'm the type of guy who easily spreads my seed to random women? And what's next? The next day, they come to me claiming they're pregnant and that it's my child. That's absurd. Yin squinted her eyes slightly, suddenly curious about what JK was saying. If you've never done it with other women, then how did you manage to control yourself before we met? Before I answer that, let me ask you, how did you manage it before you did it with me? That's my private matter. You don't need to know. JK just chuckled, observing Yin's reaction. All right, now I'm asking you, why do you suddenly want to keep your distance from me? Yin didn't answer, instead closing her eyes as if she didn't hear and pretended to sleep. Yin, I know you're not asleep yet. I don't want to discuss it now. Didn't you say I shouldn't stress? So I don't want to talk about it now. I want us to talk about it now because if we leave it unspoken, you'll become even more stressed thinking about all the possibilities in the future. Yin, are you like this because deep down, you don't want to part with our child? Yin still remained silent, trying to control her emotions to avoid crying again. And I also know that you don't want any sweet memories with me. That's why you want to limit yourself from now on, right? Yin remained silent, still not wanting to answer, but this time, her eyes began to fill with tears. Yin. You don't need to distance yourself from me anymore. Because we'll be forever husband and wife, our child will have both of us as complete parents. Yin was taken aback by what JK said. Did she hear him correctly? She quickly turned her body to make sure she heard him right. What do you mean? Yin looked at JK, who was sitting back against the head of the bed. 
After thinking it over, I want to have a complete family, a wife and child. If that's what you want, please marry another woman you love. After we divorce, another woman I love, who would that be? But you said yourself that you loved Irene. I said I used to love her, but that doesn't mean I still love her now. And my reason for not choosing her is that she doesn't meet the requirements to be my family's daughter-in-law. My parents want a grandchild, and she can't give them that. So why should I marry her? And what's your reason for keeping me as your wife? There are many reasons. Like what? First, because we're already married. Second, because you're carrying my child. Third, I don't want to separate you from our child. And I don't want our child to search for their mother. Fourth, I've grown comfortable with you. I've grown accustomed to your presence. Fifth, I don't want to be far from you. Fine, let me add another reason. Sixth, because you just want to satisfy your desires with me, right? JK chuckled softly at Yin's statement. If that's the case, it's just a bonus. Bonus? Because I already have you. I still want a divorce. What's your reason for still wanting a divorce? I want to find a man who truly loves me. And I know you don't love me. Actually, I'm starting to love you. Yin furrowed her brow, looking closely at JK. Meanwhile, JK had a small smile as he gazed at Yin. I can feel my feelings starting to grow. When I was with Irene, I felt the same way. And now, how do you feel about Irene? No, it was more like a friendly feeling, and that was after. But it seems like I didn't really love her that much back then. Maybe because she was my only female friend, that's why I felt like I loved her. When she was the only female friend I had, it was only natural for her to be more special than other women at that time. But after thinking about it, there's a difference now, between you and her. Yin became increasingly interested in JK's explanation. She seemed eager to hear what she had been waiting for all along. She really wanted to know how JK truly felt about her. What's the difference? The difference, back then, I didn't feel any desire when I was around her. Even after growing up and occasionally meeting her, I didn't feel any passion being near her. I never had the urge to kiss her, let alone any other feelings beyond that. Does that mean you genuinely loved her? Is that how you see it? So, according to you, true love doesn't involve desire? Now that we're married, let's assume I've never touched you because you couldn't rouse my desire at all. Is that the kind of relationship you consider true love? In that case, the suitable man for you isn't a normal one. You should look for an impotent man. Hey, why should I be with an impotent man? You're so annoying. Well, because normal men have desires, and those desires need to be fulfilled. Okay, okay, stop it. Why? Are you embarrassed to talk about this? We've done it many times, and you're still embarrassed when we discuss something like this? It's just, I feel a bit weird discussing it with you. Yin, so what do you think about our marriage? In my opinion, hum. Okay, I'm asking you why you wanted to distance yourself from me at one point. Why did you want to stop me from being kind to you, from caring, from giving you my attention? Yin didn't respond. She pulled the blanket up to cover the lower part of her face. I know it's because you were afraid of having sweet memories of me that you might remember later, right? Yin still didn't want to answer, but now her cheeks were flushed, and her eyes were watery. Many emotions were swirling in her mind. She still couldn't determine how she truly felt at the moment. But still, JK's words tonight made her heart feel light. Somehow, she felt more special and valued in JK's eyes now, unlike before. And even if JK truly loved her, that would undoubtedly be a positive aspect of her life. JK began to change his position, turning off the bedroom light, adjusting his pillow, and reclining on the bed. He faced Yin and gave her a brief kiss on the cheek. Now, you go to sleep. If you're feeling better tomorrow, you can go back to your classes. Really? I'll allow you to continue your studies as long as you don't overexert yourself and stress about your assignments. I'm more exhausted when you want to do that every night. I won't do it as long as you're still recovering. Hey, even so, considering my pregnancy, Aren't you worried about doing it? Actually, the doctor said it's still allowed, just more cautiously. Now, get some rest, have enough sleep so you can attend your classes tomorrow. JK and Yin started to close their eyes. The next morning, Yin woke up feeling more refreshed. She stretched her muscles. Shortly after, JK came out of the bathroom. Oh, you're already awake? How are you feeling? Do you still feel weak? Can you make it to campus today? I think I can. My sleep was enough. Well, in that case, go take a shower. 
Yin walked with great enthusiasm, thrilled that JK had finally allowed her to continue her studies without delaying her graduation. However, starting today, she realized she had to be careful not to overexert herself and avoid stress. Initially, she walked quickly with excitement, but now she strolled more leisurely. Yin, you're finally here today. Why didn't you come yesterday? What happened? I was in the hospital yesterday. What? Are you sick? No, I'm pregnant. Wow, congratulations, Yin. And you, will follow soon. I was planning to postpone it. We still want to travel together. Is that so? It sounds like fun. Hey everyone, Yin is pregnant. Wow, congratulations, Yin. Finally, you caught up with me. The four of them began to chat lightly as usual, but suddenly, Yin asked Lisa. Lisa, when you were pregnant like this, did you still do that with your husband? Sometimes but not as often as usual, because if it's too frequent, it might endanger the baby, right? But JK once told me. Told you what? That there's another, safer way that doesn't endanger the baby. I asked him, but he refused to answer, saying I should find out on my own. Maybe he meant you could use your hands or mouth. What? But of course, that's the safest way, because the baby definitely won't be disturbed. Have you ever done something like that? He asked me to do it. Is that really what he meant? Who knows, Yin? Sometimes their minds can be wilder than we imagine. Currently, Yin is lying on her bed. Lisa's explanation at campus this morning still lingers in her mind. Upon reflection, what Lisa said does make sense, and that method would undoubtedly be safer for their baby. Yin grows increasingly curious. Finally, she picks up her phone, summoning the courage to investigate further into these matters. She opens her phone's browser, her cheeks blushing, reading through various explanations on the internet. She wants a clearer understanding, so she eventually dares herself to watch a video. Yin startles, her eyes widen, and she appears frustrated, burying her face in her hands. Eventually, she murmurs to herself, Should I really do this? Just thinking about it makes me so embarrassed. Is this what he actually meant? But Lisa does this with her husband too. Does that mean this is something normal? She begins to express her frustration. What do I do about this? What's wrong? Why are you so restless, Yin? Yin is startled, her body stiffens, and her hands and feet grow cold. She raises her head to see JK standing right beside her. Since when have you been here? Just walked in. Why didn't you knock on the door before coming in? Why should I knock on the door to enter my own bedroom? Have you ever knocked before entering our bedroom? What are you saying, Yin, idiot? Yin. What are you hiding? Why don't you want me to come into this room? No, I just... Suddenly, Yin remembers her phone still lying in front of her. She wants to hide it quickly. However, due to her nervousness, the phone slips and falls to the floor, right beneath JK's feet as he stands. Oh no! Yin rushes to pick it up, but JK is quicker to grab it as it's right under his foot. Don't touch my phone! JK narrows his eyes, wondering why Yin is acting so strangely. Eventually, JK intentionally holds Yin's phone in his hand. Why are you so panicked? Is there something on your phone? Finally, JK touches the screen of Yin's phone, and what Yin was watching earlier is now displayed. Currently, Yin can only bow her head in embarrassment and avoid looking at JK. Meanwhile, JK still appears at the screen, watching a video that's now playing. For a few moments, there's silence between the two of them. Yin eventually lifts her head to look at JK, who's still standing there, calmly staring at the screen of her phone. His face seems expressionless, but his eyes are sharp. After a while. Oh, so you were watching something like this earlier? JK places Yin's phone back on the bed. He now looks at Yin, his hands in his pants pockets, with his body language showing that he's waiting for an explanation from her. No, I just saw it. I was curious about what you mentioned that night when you said there was a safer way that wouldn't endanger the baby. I asked you how to do it that night, but you refused to answer and told me to find out on my own. So, I asked Lisa. Then she told me that this might be the way, because according to her, it's the safest method. Is that really what you meant? Yes. That's exactly what I meant. Hearing JK's response, Yin closes her eyes and lowers her head. It's good that you know now, so you should be ready if I want it later. With that, JK turns around and enters the bathroom to freshen up. You're such a fool Yin, how could you get caught like this? Repeatedly, Yin curses her own foolishness. A few minutes later, JK looks refreshed as he exits the bathroom, towel drying his hair. How was your condition at the campus earlier? Are you still feeling nauseous? 
I'm still a bit nauseous, but it's better. JK begins to turn off the bedroom lights and lies down beside Yin. Tomorrow, you won't be able to attend classes because we'll be going to the hospital to check your condition again. Tomorrow? Yes, that's right. The doctor said you should have a checkup tomorrow, and you'll be given additional vitamins according to your current needs. So, you won't be going to the office tomorrow? No, there won't be enough time. Then JK pulls up the blanket, covering both of them. All right, let's sleep now. JK draws closer to Yin, turning her body so they face each other. JK gently embraces Yin's body. Yin's head now faces JK's neck, and JK's hand begins to caress her head. Before long, they both fall into peaceful sleep. The next day, they arrived at the hospital. Wait for me here. I need to use the restroom real quick. All right. Suddenly. Hi, Yin. Are you here? How's your condition? Are you feeling better? Why are you here? Irene smiles while showing her doctor's coat and badge. Look, I work as a doctor in this hospital. Yesterday, when you fainted and were brought to the emergency room, I happened to have just arrived at this hospital, so I saw you. After that, I also visited you in your patient room, but JK immediately pulled me out. Huh? He did that? Yes, he didn't give me permission to visit you because he was afraid you'd get jealous. So, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling better. Wow, here he comes. All right, I should go now. If he sees me with you, he'll scold me later. Bye. Uh, okay, goodbye. Meanwhile, JK appears to be getting closer to Yin. What's going on? Why are you smiling? Nothing. Mrs. Jian Yin, it's your turn to go in. Oh, okay. A few hours later. Now they are in the room and have just finished lunch. Yin, don't forget to take your vitamins right away. JK seems to remind Yin while lying on the bed, and he's playing with his phone now. Oh, right. Yin immediately takes the vitamin from her bag. She then drinks it. Shortly after, Yin joins JK, who is on the bed. Yin lies down and starts using her phone as well. But suddenly, JK begins to approach Yin. He cups Yin's chin and gently kisses her. Yin appears surprised, but then responds to JK's kiss. JK releases the kiss and looks intensely at Yin. I want you so much right now. JK then passionately kisses Yin again. Yin tries to break the kiss. JK, are you sure? If you're worried about the risk to our baby, then you can use the method you learned on your phone yesterday. I never thought I'd have to do that. You'll have to get used to it from now on. JK continues to kiss Yin's lips, but this time while guiding one of Yin's hands to the lower part of his body. Occasionally, JK gives Yin instructions on what to do. Initially, Yin looks shy and awkward, but eventually, she starts to get the hang of it. Until finally, Yin successfully brings JK to the peak of pleasure. JK takes a few tissue papers from the table near his bed. Yin, clean it with these. Yin takes the tissue provided by JK and begins to clean JK's spilled fluids from her hand. After finishing, JK gently takes Yin's hand and kisses her forehead for a while. Thank you. Yin doesn't reply, her face just blushes with embarrassment. Mom, there's something I want to talk to you about. What is it, dear? But mom, promise you won't get angry. Do you think I could ever get angry with you, my son? Mom, Yin is actually. She's an orphan. Her brother works in our company, and you paid her to be your wife, is that right? Mom, how did you know? All this time, I've just been playing along with the game you set up, waiting for the day you truly fall in love with her, and it turns out, you lost, and now you've fallen in love with her. Did you think I didn't know from the beginning, starting with your plan to marry her in Australia? How did you find out, Mom? Of course, I also have trusted individuals monitoring your life. You're my only child. I can't just let you go without my supervision. So, mom, are you angry with me now? Look at me. Do I seem angry now? I pressured you to get married because I wanted to have grandchildren, but that wasn't the only reason. My main reason is that I didn't want you to end up like your father, a workaholic who sees women as a burden. I hope your life will be better than his. So, in your opinion, what about Yin? You've chosen her, which means you believe she has great potential. I trust your choice. If I didn't support you, why would I throw such a grand party for both of you? JK is deeply moved by his mother's explanation. He hugs her tightly. Thank you, mom. I just want you to be happy and for our family to have descendants. You're an only child, and if you don't want to get married, who will take care of you after I'm gone? That's why you need a wife and children to carry on with life. JK can't speak any longer. All he wants right now is to continue hugging his mother. 